You're probably wondering why in the world is there someone from racing or the racing industry here to talk with you guys today. And I hope that, um, and I said this several times after the uh, folks asked me to join you, um, I want to be relevant, I want to be impactful, and certainly everything we do in motorsports uh, is exactly that. But I have the opportunity to serve as the director of motorsports for Mazda. Our headquarters are just up the road in Irvine, uh, here in the U.S., and then uh, across the pond in Hiroshima, Japan. And um, we are certainly using uh, platforms that, that you guys are focusing on over the next few days. Uh, and they're a key driver for several aspects of our business, both the Mazda brand overall and specifically what we do in motorsport. Uh, motorsport is a business for Mazda. It is a revenue and profit center. We have a very loyal audience, about 11,000 racers nationwide in the U.S. that race Mazdas and, and buy a significant amount of parts from us on an annual basis directly from, from our corporate program. Uh, it's also intertwined and woven into everything we do uh, from a business strategy, not just motorsports business strategy, but the whole company's business strategy, as well as um, the company's marketing strategy. And uh, we are very, probably more than we ever have in my career, which is now 17 years long, um, leveraging these motorsports activities to engage with our current customers, hopefully attract new customers, and uh, using the platforms, uh, tracking their journey with us, whether they're at an event or whether they're engaging with us uh, digitally through MazdaUSA.com or MazdaMotorsports.com. So, got some exciting videos. It's a little bit of a, a, no pun intended, but shifting gears from what you've been focused on so far this morning. Got some exciting videos to show you to, to try to position motorsports in general and what we do. And it just so happens that we've been working on this program for seven years. We, we've launched a top level program in endurance sports car racing. And uh, a few weeks ago, I had my annual executive committee meeting where I walk into the boardroom in Irvine, explain what we're doing, and beg and grovel for more budget. And it's always great to show up to those meetings uh, with good results. Well, seven years, we've come up dry. We've had near misses, we've almost won major races. Well, literally, in seven days, we won two, right before that meeting, and literally about 48 hours ago, we won a third in a row. So it's great to come <laughs> and talk to, uh, talk to an audience, whether it's executives that are uh, uh, spending corporate dollars or uh, folks like yourselves to be able to share that story after some exciting results. So we're going to show you some video and, and talk a little bit about how we leverage motorsports to engage with our brand and our customers. Even today, when they've got it absolutely right, it looked like the racing gods were against them. Commitment there, Tingnell to the inside, he surprises Montoya. This is redemption. But it's Mazda, Mazda in the seal at six hours of the glen. The curse is broken. It's our day, it's the Mazda day. It's a win. So that was right after the race win in New York, and uh, we leveraged that through uh, ESPN as well as all of our social channels to engage with the consumers that have been so loyal to us, all of our Mazda fans, uh, to share the good news of, of finally achieving uh, a major result. But just to give you a sense overall as the Mazda brand and how it's positioned, um, right now we're, we're focused on a, an audience that we call independent achievers. Um, and when we focus on that group, uh, we're talking about the fact that the Mazda brand and our products gives them an opportunity um, that, that heightens their state of being and, and makes them feel alive. And we do that by what we call our known buys. That's Japanese mastery, design, 
uh, engineering, uh, ingenious solutions. Uh, we run an engine package and a vehicle platform called Skyactiv. It's about um, efficiency in the vehicle platform and the engines. Uh, Artful Design, our, our cars, and that race car you saw in the uh, video was designed by the same folks that designed the road cars. Um, effortless, joyful driving. Our belief is that your road car, you should have a relationship with it, much like the VW bus in the back. Um, but we believe that, that your vehicle is not just a point A to point B. It's something that you can, can gain joy out of your driving experience. And then finally, human centricity. We believe that like our race drivers, um, that, and like a horse and a rider, um, they're, they're one. And so we believe that that's the ultimate uh, opportunity for someone um, in their driving experience. Um, this is a little bit about the independent achiever. They're ambitious, they're driven by need to achieve. Uh, they wanna connect uh, to their best selves, um, live fascinating lives. Uh, they love being challenged. Uh, certainly on the racetrack, we're challenged uh, 10 weekends out of the year as we compete for the championship. Um, and they're the happiest when they're inspired. And over the last three events, we um, have seen a group of people come together to try, try to achieve a goal, um, which is, was, has certainly been inspiring. Why motorsports for a brand as a selling point? Well, um, we believe it's the ultimate way to showcase our brand and our products, the quality and durability of our engines and our vehicle platforms. Um, we also believe that when the consumers, especially the loyal audience that's um, seeing Mazda out there competing, um, uh, racing enthusiasts, people that compete, but also people that, that follow uh, the sport, when they see Mazda achieve success, um, we believe that that changes their perception of our brand. And we've tracked that on uh, a number of years, probably the last decade or so, um, and proven that uh, to the executive team and, and to our marketing folks around the world. Um, it serves as a key element of our consumer's experience with the Mazda brand. Uh, we have those folks that actually go out and compete themselves. They actually race. Anyone driven a race car or anything uh, in the room? We've got one back there. Um, so we believe that uh, motorsports is an opportunity, a rallying point for both our current owners as well as prospective owners to engage with the Mazda brand. The bottom line of everything in the description um, within the, the context of the, the, the mini convention here is winning on track is one thing. And I've said this to the executives, maybe to a little bit of career suicide, is if we're not going to use these activities to engage with our consumers, then we should stop. We should not go racing. We, not, we should not spend the millions of dollars that we're doing, uh, that we're spending every year to go out and do those activities. We should stop if we're not using it as a marketing tool. Um, today, I'd say in my 17 years, uh, probably in the last 10 or so, we have ramped up our level of motorsports marketing engagement more than we ever have. Um, we have a very focused strategy. Mazda, as is, is many of you know, is known for the rotary engine powered cars, the MX-5 Miata, the best selling two seat sports car in the history of the world. Um, and we're focused on platforms that would showcase that product. So endurance sports car racing or grassroots level racing that allows us to uh, focus on current product or engines or, or powertrains. Um, we have a commitment to winning. So you, you can imagine it's been a, a dry seven years uh, when you talk about wanting to win every weekend and, and you keep coming up empty. So we're riding a, a little bit of a high right now. We're putting our energies into places where um, our customers can have success. So focusing on um, opportunities for people to compete themselves. That program is really our, our halo program that I showed in the video, but we're also looking at ways we can consistently give our customers an opportunity uh, to compete. And the baseline of all this is uh, an integrated strategy with our uh, agency, which is not just the typical ad agency, but they're fully uh, integrated, uh, digital, social, and, and all of the aspects of the agency, PR, um, as well as with our marketing folks. And I think uh, content generation and content delivery for us has become the key part of how we're gonna continue to tell the Mazda brand story with those customers. Those 11,000 racers I mentioned earlier, 
they are engaging with us, not all 11,000 of course, but they are engaging with us, a lion's share of them daily. Um, we have the old fashioned 800 number, but we have MazdaMotorsport.com, which is where they uh, purchase parts, receive technical advice, um, um, gain um, set up information for their cars to, to gain a competitive advantage. So the ability to communicate that information with them quickly and efficiently um, is really a key to our growth. Uh, this past fiscal year end March 30th, we experienced our highest sales revenue in the history of the program, which dates back to the mid 80s. And I 100% guarantee that it's because of the way that we're going to market now using the platforms and giving those customers an opportunity to engage with us on a daily basis, understanding what they like and what they don't like, and being able to deliver it to them quickly. You talk about uh, the, the lead-in video there with the Rolling Stones. Uh, a lot of those one-liners I was sharing with a couple of the folks in the back are exactly what drives us, the ability to react quickly. Uh, in these endurance races, we have 90 sensors on the race car. And those sensors are providing data back to our pit stand, our, our command center, um, real time. And we're using that data flow, which is again, real time at hundreds of miles per hour. Um, the car is traveling at 100 miles per hour, that is. Uh, to make decisions, strategy decisions, um, uh, fuel economy decisions, uh, tire uh, wear maintenance, all of those aspects which will allow us to achieve success are coming at us real time, allowing us to make um, quick decisions. This is our program, a very grassroots based. So I, I mentioned the folks, uh, the gentleman who raised his hand in the back, maybe competing at an amateur level. Um, that is the bread and butter of what we do. That's where we engage with most of our consumers. And in this space, Mazda has 55% market share. So when you go to these events, these grassroots events, Mazda is the dominant player. Spin that over to every day, the consumer uh, space, the main market, the broad audience, we're a 2% player in the market. So this is really a driver for us uh, with a very loyal audience. And so the, the quicker and the faster that we're able to communicate with them, uh, the better we are able to certainly serve them, but also have them be brand advocate for us outside of, of uh, just the general, the, the general market ads we can run and, and the typical marketing initiatives. Participata participatory level is our MX-5 Cup Series. We provide a race car complete. So you guys could all pool your money here today and purchase a, a $68,000 MX-5 Miata and we could have our own racing team and be, be racing uh, next weekend. And then our Pinnacle program, uh, the Endurance Racing Team, which is partnered with Team Yoast, which again, for those who know anything about endurance sports car racing, they're the greatest of all time. They won the 24 Hours of Le Mans 16 times. Uh, again, a little bit about our recent results. We're on quite a roll right now. Um, it's been a, a great journey to this point, uh, but we've had a, a lot of success. We won in, in Watkins Glen, New York back in June 30th, again in Canada, Ju July 7th, and then just last, last weekend. Just a little bit from last weekend in Wisconsin, another action shot uh, towards the end There's of the race. a little race. bit of something. Look at this. There's a little touch there between Tinknell and Montoya into turn one. Montoya's got the preferred line. How deep will Harry go? He's going to go all the way around outside and takes the lead of this race. Wow! That is an amazing move around the outside. It takes so much courage to make that happen. Harry Tinknell, knowing that Juan Montoya is one of the last of the late breakers, is still under him. And Harry says, I don't care. I'm going around the outside. So that's about 170 miles an hour there in turn one. And you can imagine how critical it is for every uh, sensor on the race car to be working uh, at all times throughout the, throughout the event. Big overview, but uh, the brand anthem for Mazda, if you've seen any of our, our broad audience spots, is, is Feel Alive. As I talked about earlier, that's really what our uh, independent achiever is, is seeking uh, today. How can motorsports play a role in that? Um, we certainly believe that that activity uh, is energizing, uh, it's inspiring, and so we hope that we can provide, as a key part of the marketing strategy, um, an opportunity for people to feel inspired. 
The grassroots, the mid-tier, and the top tier. So as I talked about, the, the foundational group, the, the loyal racers themselves, everyday folks, uh, you, you may have someone in your neighborhood that's got the, the hot rod car. They're the people that are out there participating. Um, the mid-tier folks are those people that want to launch into um, professional racing, so we give them that opportunity. And the top tier is really where our brand is. Uh, we're able to tell the full brand story of, of uh, achieving challenge at the highest levels of 24-hour, 12-hour, 3-hour in, endurance races. Um, you see the key narratives there. And I think the, the activation venues is maybe one of the most relevant uh, tie-ins here is we're at the events, we're, we're participating. We're one of the other, uh, we're one of the 19 manufacturers that's out there competing. So we're, we're in the race. Um, the other part is at the event, we have a, a consumer display. So we're engaging with uh, current owners and, and hopefully future owners at the event. Um, data capture constantly, um, engaging with them right at the display on MazdaUSA.com. Um, in a constant uh, uh, goal of trying to um, get them to put Mazda on their shopping list. Um, around the event, so uh, this event in Wisconsin last week was a perfect example. Leading up to the event, we're doing engagements at Mazda dealers with current consumers, uh, current owners, as well as local media outlets uh, to help promote the event, but also the Mazda uh, brand. The key is also... Um, away from the event. So we race in 10 markets throughout the United States a year. Closest one here is, is Long Beach uh, in April in the streets of, of Long Beach. And the other weekends, uh, we're across the country, but we don't tap into every one of the Mazda's top 15 markets. It, it, it just that the races don't, don't, don't go there. So um, the key part for us in taking what we do on the racetrack and sharing it with the rest of our consumers is, is all based on content capture. Um, I've got a few other examples um, towards the end of the way we're sharing uh, perhaps even confidential data from the race car with the broad audience to try to, to, try to pull them in, to try to see that Mazda is the, the brand to align with. Again, just another look at how we take motorsports activities um, and truly turn them into a marketing tool in the, in the toolbox. And it's fully integrated, uh, certainly the experiential at the events, um, display static, but also this weekend in Wisconsin, we had a full ride and drive experience. So consumers come to the display, we shuttle them to a, a little bit different place on the site, and they're able to sample all the product uh, firsthand uh, in a controlled environment, but also a very exciting environment. Digital social, without a doubt, uh, that's been our um, probably golden nugget lately in terms of leveraging uh, the motorsport marketing effort. Um, PR is ongoing, um, still in that arena. You know, the traditional news release is being replaced by, by video releases and one-on-ones and, and communication with our drivers. In that regard, after the New York race, we had pre-recorded all kinds of thank yous from the drivers to our most loyal Mazda fans, people that had, uh, are current Mazda owners, about 2.5 million of them in the US, uh, instantly received uh, social uh, and digital content from our drivers uh, after we succeeded, thanking them for their support. Um, CRM, uh, as much as down to uh, oil change reminder, uh, for your road car, we're trying to leverage motorsports there, uh, retail activities with our dealers, and then uh, the broad audience, uh, NBC Sports coverage, all of our races, uh, so we were able to tell the story there, all with the idea of um, targeting what we believe is, is the ideal um, customer for Mazda, the, the independent achiever. So leading up to this, this, this finally achieving our, our victory and now three in a row, um, we had a win plan in place, which was fully integrated. Um, we were celebrating two in a row, now three. Uh, so I was on the phone with the marketing folks when I was out in the lobby already talking about what we're gonna do to tell that next story. Race wins, uh, pole positions. We had the opportunity to break a 26-year-old track record at Daytona back in January. So it's been a season of momentum and, and a season of acceleration for us. 
Here's a uh, sample of uh, a lap at the Daytona International Speedway. Again, um, 200 miles per hour um, in one of our Mazda prototypes, uh, breaking a 26-year-old track record uh, to create a little bit of excitement. Not for the faint of heart. <laughs> so our, our whole focus has been trying to put our customer in the driver's seat. Again, no pun intended. Um, the typical organic social opportunities, the personalized thank yous that I mentioned earlier, um, paid social, of course, Facebook uh, and Instagram. We, we use that most notably um, and most often. Um, the, the thank you videos from our drivers, not just uh, after the first victory, but on an ongoing basis. Um, and then content ampl amplification. Um, we spread this throughout, um, not just the most enthusiastic of owners uh, or audiences, but through the, the masses, through the auto show displays that we have in 54 cities around the US, um, through the MazdaUSA.com platform, and of course through our most enthusiastic audience, uh, MazdaMotorsports.com. Um, of course, a lot of media coverage, custom articles that we're creating and, and um, distributing. Um, again, the NBC television coverage, and then since the victories, we've tried to leverage those um, through uh, ESPN, some, some particular win ad placements and that type of thing. Um, the audience that engages with us most frequently, the grassroots racer, they're spending most of their time on MazdaUSA.com. So as we work with our IT team and, and the marketing side of my role, uh, we're constantly focused on their journey. So earlier this morning, as I uh, stood in the back listening, um, we are 100% uh, focused on improving their experience with us, um, finding out uh, their navigation um, path, and trying to turn our business around in a way that, that caters to their needs uh, the, the most. Uh, they're all running in a, a very quick timeline. Um, when they're at a racetrack, uh, there's, there's immediate decisions that need to be made, and it's our hope that we can provide them with the tools um, uh, that, that are available to us through, through the websites as well as uh, our on-site staff to be able to give them the, the competitive advantage they need. Um, this is some more examples of uh, some of the things we've done since uh, the recent success, um, both um, through social, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and, and uh, Mazda USA. And um, we put this up as a, as a simple example on MazdaUSA.com. There's a rotator um, which focuses mostly on road car product. And this, this was up uh, immediately following our win on... Um, on July 1st, and uh, the immediate uh, engagement of those visiting uh, MazdaUSA.com just to shop for a road car. 
um, we saw a significant increase uh, in, in uh, engagements with, with that just based around uh, what we're doing on the racetrack. That's all I have. Um, I wanted to be able to provide a little insight into what we do uh, on the racing side, but also um, try to engage with uh, what we're doing with, with the, the grassroots groups and, and attempting to leverage the platforms uh, to the best of our abilities. So thank you.